let's get started. You can follow this smart shunt installation video for any battery types because all you're doing is putting this shunt in between the main coach negative and the negative battery terminal it was connected to. Here are the settings to be used for the various battery types that are in leisure travel vans. Oh, okay, now it works. All right. All right, house battery switch off. Okay, so, and this is a good trick to put a magnet on this. This is the sensor. Yeah. And there's a magnet on the door. So when you open and close the door, that's what moves the step in and out. But if you ever want to always leave the step in, like if you're parallel parking and you know you're going to run into a curb or something, you can just put a magnet on it before. So then the step always stays in. And you can actually shut the door and the magnet will stay there. And oh, you leave the magnet right on there. Yeah, and you shut the door. So then if you're parking and stuff, when you open and close the door, the step isn't going to keep coming out and could hit something. You know, you run into that sometimes. Or if you're working in the battery box like we are, you don't want the step in your way because, you know, then you have to lean over. So I always pull a step in so it's easy for us to work inside the battery box. Brenna. Take out, pull out the batteries because I want to disconnect the negative. All right, so we're simply going to just disconnect this negative cable to effectively disconnect power. Now we can't completely disconnect the power to the coach because Leisure does not provide us a way to disconnect the solar power. Uh, so when I am working, I'm just going to always treat, I always treat all the positive cables as hot anyway, just because you never know, um, you know, if something's going to surprise you. All right, so we will leave this disconnected basically leave both of those disconnected like that okay so we are using the 300 amp victron smart shunt it's a little bit more compact than the 500 amp one you don't really need a 500 amp smart shunt um, for 200 amp hours of batteries so this is perfect now this smart shunt it actually comes with a little booklet and inside they give you two stickers that tell you in this case they actually give you a pin and they give you a PUK number so um, a lot of the the more expensive um, Victron products are coming with their own uh, pin number so when we start up your battery sense we'll use this pin number for that um, and you know you could even keep your little your little sticker I mean you could write on here and stick your sticker there so you know you've got you know all your Victron products together and then here's the um, instruction manual so we'll put that over there the thing the other thing that I'm installing with this is this Victron temperature sensor and it's made to go with this smart shunt and the reason I'm installing this temperature sensor is I've over time decided it's a good idea I, I haven't installed it normally in the past but for everybody who has these leisure dragonfly batteries they have a manual heater you should have a heater switch up there yeah over the door and you have to manually turn that heater switch on. And so you ask yourself, well, when do I turn it on? And I would say, I would turn it on if you know it's going to be 35 or below. Because the heater keeps the batteries between 35 and 40 degrees. And it costs about 3 amps per hour for those battery heaters to work. So, you know, you want to turn them on when you really need them. You don't want to just leave them on. Um, but you don't really know that 
when does the battery get to 35 degrees? I mean, it's not necessarily at, at the same rate that the outside is at 35 degrees because this is on the inside. So I'm installing this battery temperature sensor. So you will always see the battery temperature on your shunt information, your battery monitoring information, uh, as well as the voltage, your state of charge, blah, blah, blah. But you'll also see the temperature. So you can use that. To turn on my Yeah, battery. to say, yeah. okay, it's going to be, you know, that cold outside, but, you know, maybe we're, um, you know, camping in cold weather. You know, but I'm looking at the battery right now, and it's like, you know, 39 degrees. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn it on because I know it's going to be getting colder. So, you know, it just gives you an accurate temperature measurement. So I, I think that's a good idea. So I've started, you know, in, installing that as part of this. And this is easy to connect. You just put the red on the plus battery and the black on the auxiliary. And this will connect uh, directly to the positive, the main positive terminal of your battery setup. And the way you know which one is the main is you can see both of these uh, positive and negatives are running under the step. So that means these are the ones that are connected to your coach. So this is your main positive, and this one was connected here as your main negative. And they're always connected to an opposite battery terminal. So uh, we'll be connecting this over here on this main positive terminal when we get to that point. But in the meantime, uh, what you do with a shunt is you connect, basically you're connecting it in between the system minus, which is the coach, main coach minus, and the negative battery terminal. So this goes in between those. And then I'm going to be putting this down, uh, let's see, I think I, yeah, I put it this way. I put it down between... So you'll be able to look in and see, you know, like it's little blue light flashing and uh, the wires that are sticking out won't, aren't going to get crushed or anything. And it, it, it's pretty tight there, you know, once I push it in. So it, it really is a nice place to put it. It keeps it secure. It doesn't rattle around. Um, so that's where we're going to put it uh, in our overall scheme of things. So I just have to get things lined up right so when I push it back in you know it's easier to push back in okay so we will get on with doing that all right so I'm connecting this I'm connecting the main coach terminal to to the system minus this Victron shunt and then I'm gonna get these positioned where I want them and then I'm gonna tighten them up Okay, so I need them to be this way in order to put that down on the side. And then I'm going to plug these in so I don't forget. Okay, so that's all connected. So now I'm going to just unroll this. Okay, so then I'm going to put this on the side put it on the side like this all right and then I will push the I'm not going to connect them I just want to make sure I can push everything back and connect them and then I can get this in the way it needs to be all right, so like I said, I'm going to attach this to the positive, so I want to do that before um, I connect the negative. I've got uh, I've got my temperature sensor hooked up, and now I've got to slide everything in while Hope it all fits. Well, okay, I need to, and I need to go ahead and install the negative right. because I've just got to push everything in. So let me do that. Okay. So 
So we want this to stay like this, basically. So that means we need It could be a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd have to make a new cable. Yeah. Which I really so, I mean, don't, I don't I, want It's probably to. they gave you a long one so that if you had to run it, it was convenient. Oh, it's just an extra cable I had. I mean, I didn't want to make cable if I didn't have to. Oh, that didn't come on the shunt. You had already put yeah. that on there. Oh. Yeah. No, making a cable. What gauge wire is that? Two aught. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's like 12. Yeah, you know, I, 10, I, wish, I wish it was shorter. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, so uh, what I th think I will do, and this still could, but I think it would be. Well, let me see if I can just kind of hold this here as I'm pushing it back in. I can zip tie it together. Uh, I no, could, but uh, I don't. I, it might it might be okay, but I want to give it the ability mm -hmm. to move where it needs to move. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yep. But. Uh, Nice and tight. It doesn't move. Nothing's moving. Now for the big challenge. Getting all this to slide back in. Okay, so now... Uh, you can see the shunt is back there. Uh, it's it's wedged uh, wedged between the wall. I mean, it it doesn't move. I had to make the uh, cable like a curly cue, like a little pigtail. So all that's in there. Um, everything's where it's supposed to be. That's all good. All right, we are ready to uh, start things up. Okay, so I removed these little metal things uh, to make this door go on a little bit easier. I don't like the idea of those metal plates so close to the positive battery terminals on the batteries. Anyway, so this, this will make it much easier um, to put this back in place. So we can go ahead and do that. knocked my magnet off. Uh, put this back in. Alright, that's all tight. And uh, that's all back in place. So here we have his uh, um, we put BB battery monitor, that's his shunt, and BB chassis battery, that's his uh, Victron battery sense voltage reader. Alright, so here's his status. Uh, like I said, I will post the settings. You just hit that little cog up there at the top right. Go through the settings on the battery um, thing. You just hit battery and go through your settings. 
it's really simple and then you can hit the three dots up at the top and you can uh, go to product info and you know custom name it you know basically you know do all that kind of stuff change the password if you need to um, and then oh and we did instant readout you have to hit instant readout for both of these as you're starting it up so then you get the snippet of data and then that keeps you from even having to open up the app to see the information it's just right there easy to view um, and at a glance okay so we're done